During this video, we will review how to create a new FAI within NetInspect. Once you log into your account, select First Articles and Create FAIR. Your company name will appear under Organization Name. In the Customer dropdown, you will select the customer that you're submitting this FAI to. If your customer has divisions, you will also select which division this part is being shipped to. We will enter then all the required information for for Form 1 including Field 1, Field 2, Program, and Manufacturing Process Reference. In the Program field, you will see that you might have access to certain programs but not others. If you think this is incorrect or if you need access to a program uh, that's currently listed as unauthorized, you will need to contact your company's NetInspect Administrator to get access to the program. Once we select Create Fair, a first article will, will appear with a unique number in the upper left-hand corner. A NetInspect first article will display Forms 1, 2, 3, a tab for Documents, a tab for Workflows or Tasks, and lastly, a checklist if your customer has applied a checklist for their suppliers. You will notice our first article is based on AS9102 Rev B. If you are wondering what information should go into any particular field, you can mouse over the black question marks and NetInspect will share whether AS9102 designates this field as required, conditionally required, or optional. NetInspect will also provide additional information that you can use as guidance. Since we are creating this first article manually inside of NetInspect, we will typically have our drawing next to us and we will enter the information that we see on our drawing. Some customers may require things such as supplier code or PO number. If this is an assembly first article, we should mark it as an assembly in field 13. And as we scroll down to the subassembly section, there's an option to add subassemblies. If we're working with a large assembly, we can add up to 10 rows at a time. In this case, I'm just going to add three rows. And as I start typing the detail part numbers, NetInspect will search the account for matching first articles and I can hyperlink in those FAIs. If my bill of materials includes a commercial off-the-shelf part, I can key in the information related to the part number, I can select the supplier that produces the part, and then I can put something in the 18, column 18, such as not applicable or COTS part, so my customer understands why I did not hyperlink in an existing FAI. For any of the FAIs that I've hyperlinked, I can click the blue link to open and view them. If I want to switch which FAI I've hyperlinked, I can come back um, to the part number column here on the left, and using the down arrow on my keyboard, it will pull up a list of the other FAIs for me to choose from. If I scroll to the top and select Form 2, NetInspect will detect any unsaved changes and give you the option to either save those changes, discard, or cancel and stay on the page. On Form 2, NetInspect has separated out materials, processes, inspections, and functional test and acceptance reports. You'll notice right now I don't, haven't provided any information under any section. However, if I'd like to, I can just hit the blue Add Material, Add Process, or Add Inspection button. As I start typing, my browser may remember things that I've typed in the past. I can also build dropdowns for my supplier names. So then I can choose exactly the supplier, including their name, their address, and location. I can do the same for processes. When I'm done populating all of the form, form 2 information, I can select Save Fair. Once I do that, you'll see a document icon appear under Reference Documents. This gives me the option to upload any certifications against any material, process, or inspection. To upload a document, I can select File and then use my File Navigator. Or if I have the file stored somewhere on my computer, I can drag a window over and then just drag and drop the file over the blue border area.
On Form 3, you'll notice by default there's no characteristics displayed. Similar to Form 1, I can choose how many characteristics I'd like to add at once, and I can choose a default tolerance type. So sometimes I'll look at my drawing and see how most of the tolerances are displayed. Are they nominal with the same tolerance on the high and low side? Are most of them ranges? Depending on that, it might choose a different default tolerance type. On my drawing, it starts with three notes. For notes, all you need to do is populate the description field. For each characteristic, there's a measurement type option. For notes, I'm going to mark these as attribute, where users are just going to be expected to provide a pass or fail result. If it was a note that could have a variable result, I could mark it as variable, but I need to put in a tolerance so that NetInspect can validate whether the result is within or outside the tolerance limits. The next four characteristics I'm going to add have a symmetrical tolerance. In the description field, I can put things like linear dimension, and then I'll put in my nominal and my high and low tolerance for each feature. You'll notice there's an add characteristic button at the bottom. Here, I can just select it and add an additional characteristic. This one is an angle dimension. My next characteristic is a GDT callout. For any GDT callouts, select the GDT callout box before typing in any information. To select the box, just mouse over the field as if you're going to type something under the GDT callout. In this case, I have a profile of a surface on my drawing with a tolerance and three datums referenced. You will use this GDT builder to recreate exactly what you see on the drawing. And when you select save, it will then populate the description, the nominal, the high and the low. For this, depending on the ASME standard of my drawing, I may need to display this as an unequal tolerance. In other words, as low as 0 and the high as 0 0.020. I can make that adjustment, select Save, and then we'll update my tolerance. The last feature we're going to identify is a radius. Again, we can capture that information in the description field. We can put in the nominal and then our high and low. I've now captured 10 characteristics for my drawing. There is an option at the top to uncheck the Expand Form 3 box. When I do that, it will collapse the requirements and make it easier for me to read. You'll see my three notes there have been classified as attributes, so I have the option to pass or fail those. And then I've got some dimensions, a GDT callout, and finally that radius. NetInspect will automatically assign a bubble number and increments it at the same rate as the characteristic number. If I want to add additional information, such as reference location, I can select all the characteristics that I want to update, and then we have a bulk update option where I can change things like reference location. My customer may also require additional data in column 14. I can choose to add additional columns such as gauge type, gauge ID, and that will add columns on the right hand side. I can then use that bulk update tool to bulk update any of those columns. Some companies will have a particular user build or plan the FAI 
They will then go into production and someone else, an inspector, will come in and capture results. That's why we have this collapsed view so that you can look at everything nice and easily and then an inspector could just go down the results field and quickly key in the information. As you key in the results, NetInspect will color code where the results fall in relationship to the specification. If the result is colored green, that means it's between 0 and 50% of the tolerance. If the result is yellow, that means it's between 50 and 100% of the tolerance. And if you want to add additional results, you can do so using the plus symbol next to the result field. And if any results go out of tolerance, we will, NetInspect will color code those with red and it will enforce a nonconformance number. At any time a user can mouse over a result and see exactly who entered the measurement, the date, timestamp, and the percentage of tolerance used. On the Documents tab, I have the documents that I uploaded to Form 2 displayed. Here I can use the File Explorer to go add additional documents, or if I have them stored in a location, I can just select the files and then drag and drop them over the blue bordered box. NetInspect will use the file name as the description, but the user has the ability to change this. So if you want to provide any more descriptive text for your customer, you can. NetInspect does require a document category for each document. Here I'm going to choose that most of these are certifications, uh, but then I might go through and modify and specify where that is not the case. Once I select Upload, NetInspect will upload each document. And at the top, I can see the total number of documents that have been attached to this fair. My total is now at 13. If I want to look at any of the documents that I've attached, I can just select the file name and it will either download or open the draw drawing or any file into in my browser. The next tab over is workflows and tasks. If you have a standard group of individuals that are involved in the FAIR process every time, so say you have planning and then inspection and then a quality review, you can build a customized workflow so that users can mark when they're done with their step of the FAI and an email notice will be sent to the next group. You can also filter your FAIs by the status of the workflow, so then users that are only assigned, say, to quality review only need to look at the FAIs that are waiting for their review. If you attach a workflow to a fair, it will prevent the submission of the fair until the workflow is complete. In other cases, you might have a one-off request to someone. Task is perfect for this function. So here under tasks, we can add any type of task, so we just give it a description, and then we can assign it to a user, a department, or a work center. So I could say things like, uh, please track down the material cert and attach it to this fair. When I assign that to a user or department, it will send an email notice to either that user or any individuals associated with the department, sharing my description along with the due date. We have a consolidated task view list, so you can see all the tasks that have been assigned across multiple first articles, and you can see if any are overdue or coming due. Lastly, on the checklist tab, this is a list of questions that your customer may flow down to you. You can answer these questions, you can provide comments to your customer, but most customers do make this a mandatory checklist, which means it must be completed and signed before you will be able to submit this fare to your customer. Now that we've populated forms one, two, three, we've uploaded our documents, we've completed the checklist, we're now ready to submit this first article to our customer. Um, to do that, we're going to go back to Form 1, and as we scroll down, uh, we're going to see a signature section. Within this section, there's a flag to mark that FAI is complete or not complete. By default, NetInspect marks the FAI as not complete, and per AS9102, this should remain marked as not complete if there are any non-conforming results on Form 3. Otherwise, we can mark it as complete, and then we can sign all forms.
When I sign the field 19, it will lock forms 1, 2, and 3. You can see the lock symbols at the top. This will prevent another user from changing it unless I choose to unlock the form, but it is not yet submitted to my customer. To submit it to the customer, we must scroll down to field 21 and then select the gold submit option. We can provide comments to our customer. And then select OK. Once I submit that FAI to the customer, it will turn to pending buy off and color coded as gold to correlate with that quick filter at the top. If my customer approves my FAI, it'll turn green and I will see a buy off completed status. Or if they reject my FAI, it will turn red and I can select the first article to see why my customer rejected it. There will be a comments bar on the left hand side and I always recommend selecting the fair comments option so that you can see if the customer provided any specific guidance when they rec rejected it or whether it's only these field level comments that I need to correct. If the fair is rejected, we will clear the signature so I can quickly revise the information that needs to change and then I will go through the same submission process where I will scroll to the bottom, sign field 19 and then again sign field 21 to submit it to my customer. This is an example of a fully approved fair. It will have a message at the top, all the forms will be locked and then as I scroll down I will see not only field 19 has been signed in field 21 but also my customer has signed field 23. At any time if I want to see the history of the first article I can select fair comments and see how many times it went back and forth between ourselves the supplier and our end customer. If at any point I need to print this FAI there is a print option in the upper left hand corner we will give you options on whether you want to choose to print just forms 1, 2, and 3 or documents and we do have a download to PDF option. If for some reason you need to make changes to this FAI that's already been approved, the only option is to reset the FAI. When you select this option, it will give you a chance to request the reset and provide comments, but this will go to your customer for approval. Your customer will have to authorize a reset before NetInspect can clear the signatures and allow you to change the data within the first article. During this video, we looked at how to create an FAI. If you ever need help, there's video tutorials, knowledge base articles you can access from your dashboard. There's also blue question marks built in throughout the application. You are also welcome to contact our help desk at helpdesk at netinspect.com or 425-233-6176. We appreciate your time today and look forward to working with you.